Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for October 18th, 2022. Um, so I'm teaching a series entitled Pursuing Grace-Based Success, where I know you want to be a success. I've never met a person, not a single person on this planet that wants to be a failure. You want to succeed at something, right? And so, but as we are pursuing success, we're learning in this series how to pursue success God's way. And today we're going to learn about the purpose of your prosperity, why God wants you to be successful, why God wants you, why God blesses us with more than enough, right? God, we serve a God that takes us from the land of not enough to the land of just enough to the land of too much stuff. I mean, we serve a God that is a God of increase and favor and excess and overflow. And when we come to God, oftentimes our thinking was framed by the things of this world. I know for me, I, I was raised and because of the experiences that I had in life, I came to God with a poverty mindset, but God doesn't have a poverty mindset at all. And so my, my thinking had to be reshaped and reframed so I could think and act like God. Put this in the chat. I think and act like God. And so I believe what God believes about me. I, I allow my, my thinking and my mindset and my opinion of me to be based on God's opinion of me. Say my opinion of me lines up with God's opinion of me. And so what it is, is I am believing what God believes about me. I'm seeing myself the way that God sees me. I, I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will go wherever God launches me to go, and I will accomplish what God sent me to this planet to accomplish while I'm in the land of the living so that when I stand before God, God can say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I am a success and had nothing to do with money or cars or houses or fame or title. I had everything to do with my divine purpose. So that's what we're learning in this series. The title of today's message is Pursuing Grace-Based Success, Part 22, The Purpose of God's Overflow Towards You. I'm going to talk to you today about God being a God of overflow and why is it that God gives us overflow. There's purpose behind it. Let's talk about it. All right, so let's get into the word for this morning. Our foundational scriptures, there are three of them. Acts, uh, Ephesians chapter two, verses eight through 10, the Bible says, I mean that you were saved by grace. Say, I'm saved by grace. You were saved by grace. All you did was receive it when you believed. And so it was a gift. You can't work for a gift. All you can do with the gift is receive it. It's a gift from God. Eternal life is a gift from God. Verse nine says, you are, you are not saved by the things that you have done. So you have nothing to boast about. Verse 10 says, God made us a new creation in Christ Jesus so that we could spend the remainder of our days doing the good works that God has before ordained for us to do. Say, I have work to do. You and I, we have work to do. There's some good works that, that God has before ordained for us to do. First Corinthians chapter one, verses 30 and 31, the Bible says that God has united you with Christ Jesus. Now for our benefit, God made him, Christ Jesus, to become wisdom itself. So now we have access to wisdom from above. Not only that, but the Father made us right with him because of Jesus. So say this, say, I am the righteousness of God by faith. So I, I have access to wisdom and I am the righteousness of God because of Jesus. And then because of Jesus, the Bible says that God made me pure and holy and freed me from sin. So God made me pure, God made me holy, and God freed me from sin. All of that is because of Jesus. Therefore, verse 31 says, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. You have nothing else to boast about. If you want to boast, you should boast about the Lord. Second Timothy chapter one and verse nine, the Bible says that God saved us and called us. So if you're born again and you're saved, you're saved. Say I'm saved. But if you're saved, you're not just saved. You're saved and called. You have a calling. Say, say this, put this in the chat. My calling is calling me. So God saved us and called us. Watch this with the holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So God gave me a purpose and the grace for the purpose in Christ before the beginning of time. So I am destined for greatness. Third John 2 says, beloved, I pray, I, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health 
even as your soul prospers. And then a few days ago, we looked at a passage in, in Ecclesiastes chapter five. Let's go back to it again this morning, and then I'll get into the teaching. I know you're like, Rick, this is a lot of scripture that you're reading every day, every day. Listen, the word of God is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It, it is capable of separating soul from spirit. So as I'm reading the word of God and I'm getting this down in your heart on a daily basis, believe me, the word is working. So you should, it's okay. Let me, I never, never complain about me getting the word down in your heart. Let me get it down in your heart and then I'll give you the teaching. All right. Ecclesiastes chapter five, the Bible says, even so, this is Solomon, the richest man and the wisest man on the planet. He says this, he says, even so there's one thing I noticed that it's good. Like he's like, okay, this is the richest man on the planet, the wisest man on the planet. He says, well, one thing is good. Oh, one thing. What is that, Solomon? It is good for people to eat and drink and enjoy their work under the sun, doing the short life that God has given them, and to accept their lot in life. Say, I accept my lot in life. Yeah, that, that's it. I accept my lot in life. And it is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. We dealt with wealth and health yesterday. To enjoy your work and to accept your lot in life this is indeed a gift from God. Now, God keeps such people so busy enjoying life that they take no time to brood over the past. You ever met somebody that's just always thinking about the past, the good old days, talking about, these are people that are not enjoying life. When you are enjoying life, when you accept your lot in life and you, you, you're receiving health and wealth from God, you're walking out your divine purpose, you don't have time to be meditating and medicating on the past. You are looking, it's forward ever, backward ever, the best is yet to come. Say amen to that, all right? So what does this mean for you today? I have three things. I actually have more, but I had to stop. Like I have some stuff I had to push to tomorrow. God gave me a whole lot this morning. But anyway, I'm gonna give you three of those things this morning. You ready? Three things. Number one, here we go. Number one, the purpose of God's blessing is so you can be a blessing to others. Put this in the chat and say it out loud. I am blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to be a blessing. The purpose of God's blessing on me is so that I can be a blessing to others. So Abraham is considered the father of faith, right? And God told Abraham, the father of faith, that he was going to bless him. And not only that, that all the families of the earth will be blessed through him. So the, the, the promise to Abraham was, I'm going to bless you so that you could be a blessing to other people. And so that's the pattern that we see in Abraham. He's the father of faith. I could have used Adam as an example because God blessed Adam so he could be a blessing to the whole world as well. And, but the pattern is blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to be a blessing. God promised to Abraham, I'm going to bless you so richly that all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So our God doesn't have a lack mindset. Our God doesn't have a limited mindset in any way. So because God doesn't have a lack mi mindset or a poverty mindset, when God wants to bless us, newsflash, God is not just trying to meet your needs, your immediate needs. Like, like when people say, oh, God, all I want, all I want is just enough for me and my family. I don't need any, I don't need a whole lot, God. All I want is just enough for me. Well, that's a mindset. That's a that you are thinking your mind has been uh, framed or shaped in such a way to where you're not thinking like God, because God will never just say, oh, I just want to meet your needs. <laughs> I just want to meet your needs. That's it. Like uh, God is a God of excess and overflow. God never says, you know what I want to do for Jimmy or Sarah or Keisha? I just want to bless them with enough to meet their needs, their immediate need. No. If you are thinking that way, you're not thinking like God. God always blesses us to be in a position to be a blessing to other people. Say this, I'm blessed to be a blessing. So since I, I taught about David and Mephibosheth a few days ago, I, I thought I'll just use David and Mephibosheth as an example today to make this point. So let me just use David and Mephibosheth for a minute. When David found out that there was someone from Jonathan's house that was still alive, he said, bring him to me. All right, so they bring him and, and Mephibosheth comes and... Uh, David said, Mephibosheth. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> and he, he had based himself. Remember, he was raised in the palace, but at this point he had dri been dropped by life. He was maimed. He was living in Lodabar. Uh, you know, he had no future. He was in a barren place. His mindset was all jacked up. And so he la lays down before the king. He says, yes, sir. And the king says, don't be frightened. Don't be afraid. 
Listen, I want to do something special for you. Listen, I am so blessed that I want to be a blessing to you. I want to do something special for you in memory of your father, Jonathan. To begin with, I'm returning to you all the property of your grandfather, Saul. I, I, this is a season of restoration and restitution for you. I'm giving to you all the property of your grandfather, Saul. Furthermore, you're going to take all your meals at my table. And then Mephibosheth said this. This is how a lot of people come to God. He says, why? Why would you want to do that with me? Why do you even care about me? I'm, I'm, I'm worth no more than a dead dog. You see the, the problem with his mindset? The problem with the mindset is that he didn't believe what, what, what David believed about him. David believed, boy, this boy, he was raised to be a le he, under the legacy of the throne. Let me make sure that he eats all his meals at the palace. Let me make sure that he's back around royalty. Let me make sure why, because I have a covenant with his father, Jonathan, but he came to the whole situation with a poverty mindset. And so you got to think about it, but let's think about it from David's perspective. David was the king of Israel, right? He was unquestionably blessed. He was profusely blessed. And he had endured long enough to see what God said. I've done a lot of teaching on David and how, how it got to the point where David had to wait 13 years to become the king. But the promise was for him to be the king of Israel. So it took 13 years for him to become the king of Judah. And then after that, seven more years before he could become the king of the unified Israel. And then once he's the king and he's conquering nation after nation after nation, and his kingdom is expanding and he is advancing and the grace of God is on him to win and his kingdom is growing. It is at that point, he said, I am so blessed. I need to be a blessing to other people. He says, see, see the thing is God, our God is not selfish. Say this, God is not selfish. God is always looking for ways to be a blessing to other people. So when we operate with the heart of God, when we have the mindset of God, then we are always going to be looking for ways to be a blessing to other people. The purpose of divine, put this in the chat and say it out loud. The purpose of divine prosperity is evangelism. The purpose of divine prosperity is evangelism. God wants you to be blessed so that you can take whatever you have in excess of and be a blessing to other people. God takes you from not enough to just enough to the land of too much stuff so that you can use your overflow and minister to other people out of your overflow. Why? Because God is not selfish and God is a God of excess. God is a God of more than enough. The Listen, our God doesn't even think in just enough. Our God is a God of more than enough and he gives you more than enough of whatever you need. He gives you more than enough love, peace, favor, grace, wisdom, finances. He gives you more than enough so that you can be in a position to be a blessing to other people. I'm going to build my case. I'm going to teach on it this morning. I'm going to walk through this thing. So if you listen to me for any period of time, you're going to know that I want you to hold on, to wait, to endure long enough so you can see what God said, to receive what God promised. But when you finally get your breakthrough, when your breakthrough comes and you receive what God said and you're walking in your prosperity, please remember that God is looking for you to look for ways to be a blessing to other people. Say this, say, God is looking for me to look for ways to be a blessing to other people. So God blesses me, but God is looking for me to look for ways to be a blessing to other people. So I'm always looking to be a blessing. God wants you to be a conduit. Say, I am a conduit. Let me explain what a conduit is. God wants you to be a conduit of his love and of his light and of his finances on this planet. So once you prove to God that you can be a conduit, now a conduit, what mindset wise, if I'm a conduit, that means that I'm not keeping everything that comes in, into my into my life, right? So I'm not keeping everything. So, so God gives me wisdom concerning his word. So it's so good that I'm a conduit. I'm not just going to keep it for me. I'm going to jump on here on today's word and give it to you for free. I'm going to just give it to you because God gave it to me, right? So I'm not just keeping it for myself. So when you're a conduit, you know that there, there are things that are coming to you and it comes to you so that it can come through you. It's coming to you so that it can come through you. Say amen to that. So when you are a conduit of the blessing, you know that God has given you stuff, insight, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, understanding, even finances. And he gives, he, he expects you not to keep it all. If you're going to keep it all, then now what you're doing is you're hoarding instead of becoming a conduit of God's blessing. If God knows that he can get things to you and then get things through you, then there's, there's no limit to what God will get to you because he is using you as a conduit of blessing to other people. He wants you to impact 
your community. He wants you to impact the, the, the people and the systems of this world. Say amen to that. Say, I'm a conduit. All right. Number two, you cannot manipulate God. Now I'm going to slow down on this point because I want to make sure you hear my heart on this. In, in yesterday's message, I talked about uh, the prosperity gospel and how it is true. It's sad, but it's true that some preachers have manipulated people with scripture. Some people have twisted scripture uh, to the point where they have manipulated people to get money uh, and basically to, to take money. And this is not right. And, and God is going to deal with these people. But some people have manipulated others to get money from them using the Bible. And, and I got it. And, and that's a terrible situation. That doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to be blessed. I'm just saying that there's some, some bad apples, right? But almost worse than that mindset is what came as a result of it. Because these people have twisted scripture, then unfortunately, it's created a bunch of people. There are people that listen to that type of teaching, and now they have a warped mindset when it comes to the things of God. They see God almost like Santa Claus or like a sugar daddy. And so, so watch this. Uh, let, let me explain. God is not here to just give you your selfish desires. Just to be clear, God is, is here to, to accomplish his kingdom plans and purposes on this planet. God is not just here to give you selfish desires. So while I am 100% convinced that sickness is not of God, poverty is not of God, I am also equally convinced that you cannot tell God what to do. You don't command God, right? If you, com if you could tell God what to do, then you would be God's God. And, and so it would be like the tail wagging the dog. So you can't just command God. You can't tell God what to do. Faith is not about you telling God what to do or commanding God or, or none of that. Let me explain. So let's say, for example, and people do this. So don't act like people don't do this. People do this. Let's say people see a Rolls Royce and there are people that have received this twisted teaching. So they'll say, oh, God, I claim that Rolls Royce in the name of Jesus. God, I command you to give me a Rolls Royce. Okay, fine. You can say that, but that's not faith and that's not, that's not God, by the way, right? Or, or you can say, God, you said that you would give me the desires of my heart. I desire that yacht. Therefore, I command you to give me that yacht. Okay, in Jesus' name. <laughs> All right, fine. You, you could, I mean, people do that, but that's not faith. Just let, let's make sure we understand. Faith is not about you telling God what to do. Faith is not about you trying to get God to put a yes on your plans. Faith is about submission. Say this. Say faith is about dying to self. Faith is about submission. Faith is about surrender. Faith is about getting rid of self and selfishness. And so when you, when to live by faith, faith is about God trying to get you to put a yes on his plans, not your plans. So God will freely give you everything that you need to accomplish his kingdom plans and purposes on this planet. Listen, God, get, God can get you millions and billions if that's what it takes. Whatever you need to accomplish what you're called to do, God can put it in your hands. God has all the resources, the cattle on a thousand hills. So God is not opposed to giving people millions or billions. God made, David was a billionaire. Solomon was a billionaire. So, I mean, and, and they were made rich by God. That's not the issue. The issue is not you having money. The issue is when money has you. And so God is not your servant. To be clear about this, say God is not my servant. You're his servant. So God is not obligated to give you whatever you come up with in your heart, your selfish desires. This series is about success. But I want to be clear that success is not about stuff. It's not about things. Like, like there are people that just want stuff. They want things and they're chasing stuff. And if you chase stuff and you chase things instead of chasing God, your life is going to wind up in ruin. You can be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit and be outside of the will of God. But if you chase God instead of chasing stuff and chasing things, then God has a way of making sure that the things chase you. So God will give you more than enough. God will bless you richly for your enjoyment. If you like something, God will give you 10 of them. I mean, that's not the issue. God, God wants you to be happy. God wants you to enjoy. It. It's a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it, but that shouldn't be your focus. Your focus should not be stuff. Your focus needs to be purpose. And then once you are a conduit of blessing, you should not have, have anything that you're not willing to give away. Once you become a conduit of God's blessing, there's no limit to what God can place in your hands because you have proven to God that you are, your life is not just about you. 
Your life is all about him. You got it? All right, I got it. That's enough. All right, number three, last point for today. And I told you I had a lot more, but I have to stop after three because I'll continue tomorrow. So here's number three. I think this one will, will put some light on the first two points. It's going to add to it. Number three, you minister to others out of your overflow. Say this, say, I minister out of my overflow. So you minister to other people out of your overflow. Let me explain. Jesus got up every morning focused on the Father. Jesus got up every morning and he was open to do. He was like, I'm not on this planet to do what I want. I'm here to do the will of the one who sent me. He says, the words that I speak, they're not my words. The reason why I can make judgments and my judgments are always just because I'm not the one that's judging. I'm not the one that, that, that's deciding. It's the Father who lives in me. He gives me the words. He performs the work. Jesus got up every morning, focused on the Father. Father, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do today? Okay, Father, what? what? Oh, to, Lord, what do you say? Oh, Father, you want me to go through Samaria? Well, we never go through Samaria. Every day, every time we come from, from Capernaum, our ministry headquarters, down to Jerusalem, we go this way. We actually cross the river to avoid Samaria. But today you want me to go through Samaria. Why? Oh, you got a divine appointment. There's a woman at the well. Okay, Father, I'll do that. So he was willing to do whatever God wanted. Oh, what's over here in this town? There's a donkey. There's a donkey waiting on me. I haven't. Okay, I got it. So God was he was speaking to, to, the Father was speaking to Jesus and Jesus was open to do whatever the Father wanted him to do on a daily basis. And that's how we're supposed to live. But here's my point though. Jesus lived the life of purpose and Jesus lived the life of service because all of his needs were met. Jesus could not spend time focused on others if he was struggling personally. Say this, say, say, I do not struggle. I'm not struggling personally. So Jesus could not focus on others if he was focused on himself. But Jesus could focus on, on, on others because all of his needs were met. He had more than enough of everything. He had more than, he never lacked anything. They was like, hey, Jesus, you got to pay taxes. <laughs> Father, where's the money? Oh, right over here. Go get it over here. Boom, let's pay. What else you need? Oh, Jesus, we got to feed these people. All right, we have whatever. You know, he, he, his needs were met. And because his needs, he had enough peace. He had enough wisdom and grace and favor and love and all of that. He was able to minister to people out of his overflow. I'm going to use myself as an example. So I won't focus. Rick Pena, I'm not going to focus on being a blessing to other people. Uh, let's say another marriage. Say, say a couple calls Isabella and I and say, hey, do you, do you guys have a, 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 a few minutes to talk to us? You know, um, our marriage is struggling. We're at the brink of divorce. And can you talk to us? Sure. Watch this. Isabella and I can't talk to them. We're not going to be in a position to minister to their marriage if our marriage is jacked up. If our marriage is at the brink of divorce, then there's no, I mean, I'm not going to get on the phone with them because I'm over here struggling myself, right? And so because our marriage is strong and we have an overflow, of love in our marriage, now we can minister to other people out of that overflow. Okay, uh, let's say, for example, hey, Brother Pena, can you talk to me? I need you to talk to my son. Well, I'm not going to talk to your son if I'm pulling my hair out with my own son. You know what I'm saying? And so, but if I have a, a, an overflow of peace concerning my children, then I can minister to you concerning your children. Or let's say, for example, hey, Brother Pena, can I talk to you for a minute? I don't want to go, you know, I, I don't want to fill out paperwork from the church. I don't really want an, anybody to know what's going on. But right now, we, we need some groceries, right? Right now, we don't have any, like the, the first of the month is 10 days away. And me and my family, we don't have any food. Can you help us out? Sure. I mean, let's go buy some groceries. But I can't, I can't take you to go buy some groceries if I can't pay my own bills. Right? And so so God wants us to minister out of our overflow. Jesus ministered out of his overflow. All of his needs were met. Say this. Say, all my needs are met. Say, I have more than enough. And the reason why God wants you to be in a place where you have more than enough is so that you could be a blessing to other people. Jesus could minister peace because he had overwhelming peace. Jesus could minister love because he was love personified. And guess what? The Bible says in John 14 and 12, Jesus said, the works that I do, you're going to do, and even greater works because I go to the Father. So that's why God is not opposed, as I close, listen, God is not opposed to giving you more than enough of everything that you need. Because when you have more than enough, you are a prime candidate to be used of God to be a blessing to other people. Now, it, as I close, let me say this. There's some people that say, going back to what I said earlier, oh, Brother Pena, I heard what you said but all I want is enough for me and my four and no more. You know, I, I know you think that sounds holy, 
But can I tell you what, what it sounds like to God? It sounds selfish. Let me say that again. I know that people, oh, I don't need a lot. I just want enough for me. I, all these people that have all this stuff, I don't want that. Why? Because the more you have, the more you have to manage, right? But God is like, no, I want to be able to trust you as a conduit. Yes, the more I give you, the more, the more you have, the more you have to manage, but I'm giving you the grace to manage it. But if you tell me all you want is enough for you and your family, you are selfish. All you're thinking about is you. And that's not the heart of God at all. So, so you ought to open up your heart to be a blessing. You're blessed to be a blessing. If, if you are just focused on you, then you're too selfish to see the greater opportunity to, to impact your community and to impact the world through you and your family. Part of divine success is that God wants to give you more than enough so that he can be a blessing to you and then through you, say amen to that. Listen, I try to take my time today because this is heavy stuff. There's a lot in here. And I had a lot more that I had to push to tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to flow in the same vein. But say this again. Say, say, I am a conduit. Say, God, you can trust me with more than enough because I'm not pursuing selfish desires. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and speak this over your life. Declare this by faith. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about grace-based success. I agree with your word. Your word says it is a good thing to receive wealth from God and the good health to enjoy it. You know my heart, Father. My focus in life is to maximize the purpose and the potential that you placed inside of me. So you bless me to be a blessing. As I pursue my purpose, you see to it that I have everything I need. And so I'm able to minister to others out of my overflow. I have peace in my heart. So I'm able to minister peace to those who need rest. I have love in my relationships. So I'm able to minister love to those who are thirsty for it. I have a sound marriage. So I'm able to minister to other marriages, marriages that are struggling. I have divine wisdom. So I'm able to share that wisdom with other people who need it. And financially, Father, you bless me with more than enough. So I am a conduit of kingdom finance. And I'm able to fund your projects all over the world. Whatever you want to do, I say yes. I will not selfishly just focus on me. I will give myself over to you. Now, the more I have, the more I have to manage, but I believe you give me the grace for it, which is why I declare greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. Tomorrow, we're going to have another one. So listen, this is a message you might need to listen to again. This is a message you definitely need to share. So I need you to, first of all, if you're not getting my notes, you get the notes for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Sign up your friends, put their email in there too. All right. And then do me a favor, two things. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing. I like to read those. Share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. Have an amazing day. And remember, you are a conduit of the blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. Your life is not just about you. You're supposed to go out there and change the world. Have an amazing day. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to learn more about our ministry or you would like to partner with our ministry, please visit ripministries.org. You will learn there what we're doing in the Caribbean, providing a Christ-based education to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic. We also provide them a hot meal every day. If you would like to partner with us, click on the donate button. All the donations are tax deductible in the United States. If you don't have my book, Level Up Your Life, go to rickpina.co and get the book today. From rickpina.co, you'll also see that I have journals and I also have some other products and apparel and etc. all centered around the grace life. And then lastly, if you enjoy this content, but you want direct access to Isabel and I, the Lord impressed it upon my heart 
for Isabella and I to start mentoring people, giving people access to us to be able to ask us questions. We're answering questions about ministry, about missions, nonprofit, for profit. I'm addressing things uh, as far as how I preach, our approach to preaching. We're putting out private content just for a specific group in the Patreon. So please visit patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina if you're interested in this material. Have an amazing day.